In this presentation, we will review the cranium and mandible for the AP axial town method projection. Image analysis guidelines for the cranium and mandible, the town method, state that the distances from the posterior clinoid process to the lateral borders of the foramen magnum on both sides and the mandibular necks to the lateral cervical vertebral breath on both sides are equal. Your petrous ridges should be demonstrated as symmetrical. The dorsum cellae should be at the center of the foramen magnum. For the cranium and uh, petromastoid portion, the dorsum cellae and the posterior clinoids are seen within the foramen magnum without foreshortening and without superimposing the atlas's posterior arch. Uh, the sagittal suture and nasal septum are aligned with a long axis of the exposure field. The distances from the posterior clinoid processes to the lateral borders of the foramen magnum on both sides are equal. Uh, the petrous ridges are at the same transverse level. For the cranium, the inferior occipital bone is at the center of the exposure field. And for the cranium, outer cranial cortex, petrous ridges, dorsum cellae, and foramen magnum are all included within the exposure field. Now for the mandible, there's a few extra items here that are included in the image analysis guidelines. The dorsum cellae and posterior clinoids are at the level of the superior foramen magnum, and the mandibular condyles and fossae are, should be clearly demonstrated with minimal mastoid superimposition. For the mandible, a point midway between the mandibular rami is at the center of the exposure field. And for the mandible, the mandible and temporomandibular fossae are included within the exposure field. Now let's jump back to the cranium and let's just talk about um, uh, our uh, central ray and how we are to position the patient. For the cranium um, and for the mandible, the OML is again aligned perpendicular to the IR. You're going to utilize a 30 degree caudal angle um, for the cranium. The central ray will be directed to the MSP at a level of two and a half inches above the glabella. For the mandible, we will still um, place the OML perpendicular with the IR. You will utilize a 35 to 40 degree caudal angle and center the central ray to the mid sagittal plane at the level of the glabella. I have included your image analysis guidelines for you to review. So let's talk about cranium rotation um, in the town method. Uh, it is a little bit easier to detect because we are taking it as an AP projection. However, there's a, um, a few little um, tips and tricks to identify rotation. Head rotation is demonstrated on an AP axial projection if the distance from the posterior clinoid process and the dorsum cellae to the lateral border of the foramen magnum is greater on one side and the distance from the mandibular neck to the cervical vertebra is greater on one side than the other. Okay, this is for cranium, so you're only going to see the relationship of the posterior clinoid process here 
to the dorsum cellae. And as you can see, this side has the greater distance and this one has the least on the other side. So the patient's head is pointing towards the left, okay? You can also kind of look at the symmetry of the head and um, which direction the face starts to um, project in. And, and it looks, you know, taking a look at it, you can see um, it is turning towards the left some. But again, you want to just make sure that your posterior clinoid processes are sitting um, symmetrically within that do dorsum cellae to determine if there is any rotation. So remember in the town method projection, we want the OML perpendicular to the IR. But in the case that the OML is insufficiently tucked, or, or uh, yes, the chin is insufficiently tucked, then um, the dorsum cellae will be demonstrated superior to the foramen magnum. And when that occurs, you're going to need to realign the OML so it is perpendicular to the IR. In the case where the OML alignment is uh, in a, inadequate and we have excessive chin tuck, uh, the dorsum cellae will be foreshortened and will be superimposed over the atlas's posterior arch. So you can see the atlas in the um, picture down here right here, that posterior arch here, and you can see it right here, where it is um, uh, that the dorsum cellae um, is superimposing over that, por uh, that portion of the posterior arch, and we don't want that. We need to um, realign the OML so that is perpendicular with the IR to achieve the uh, appropriate image. So let's take a look at cranial tilting and its um, difference between a rotation. Uh, with rotation, we typically see the distance from the lateral border of the foramen magnum to the lateral border of the cranium greater on one side than the other. However, with um, tilting, um, it's not going to um, uh, project the same. Instead, head tilting um, will demonstrate the petrous ridges at different transverse levels, while head rotation will not. Uh, the head tilted towards the side, demonstrating the inferior petrous ridge, and the side demonstrating the greatest distance from the foramen magnum to the lateral border of the cranium is the direction it is rotated in. So in this case, the patient's head is um, rotated towards the left side. In order to correct this, you want to ensure that the MSP is um, aligned with the long axis of the IR. Also, um, looking, taking a look at that sagittal suture, you can see that it is not aligned down the, um, in with the long axis of the IR as well. So that should sh let you know that there's either some type of rotation or um, uh, head tilting going on. So let's look at um, a practice analysis for the town projection, AP axial. When you take a look at this projection, we can uh, we want to see if we have any rotation, um, which you want to look for your dorsum cellae and your clinoid processes. You really can't visualize them very well. And so this should give you a thought, well, I might have a central ray alignment or misalignment or an OML misalignment. And in this case, we have an OML misalignment because the dorsum cellae 
um, and anterior clinoids are demonstrated superior here. I think they're up here, some right here, superior here to that foramen magnum. Um, so that should indicate to you the OML was not, uh, or the chin was not tucked enough for the OML to be perpendicular with the IR to form that 30 degree angle with the uh, central ray. So in order to correct this, we want to tuck that chin and so that the um, orbital beatal line is perpendicular to the IR and uh, repeat that image. This completes the image analysis for the um, town's projection. If there's any questions, um, please feel, feel, feel free to reach out to me via email or um, at clinic, and we will review the material. Um, thank you for participating in this presentation.